All right, so that's my introduction. Now I want you to have a look at this question here. Now this was in your, um, this was in the handout that we um, uploaded to Canvas back on Tuesday. So maybe you've had a go at this question already, but I'm not gonna assume all of you have. So at this point, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to have a think using the knowledge that we just kind of unpacked um, over the last five minutes. You've got this situation here where you have this body and it's sort of here in the center and we can call that the origin. It's being acted on by the four forces, F1, F2, and F3, and um, it tells you the magnitudes of each of those as well. Um, this one's one, two, four, and five. What will be the resultant um, motion of the body? What, what direction will the forces be pushing it in, okay? Now, one of the options is in equilibrium, and they kind of look like, oh, it's like sort of a star shape, looks pretty close, right? However, you know um, from the outset, even just by looking at this diagram, I hope you can see, this diagram is not gonna be as useful as you'd hope because it's not to scale, and so the argument that we made uh, looking at all those previous diagrams doesn't hold. Um, how can I prove that very, very quickly? Just have a look at this distance here. Uh, this one here, which is apparently meant to represent one. Um, when I compare that to F4, which is this distance over here, um, I don't know how long F4 is, but it does not look five times longer than F1. So you know that this diagram is not to scale, even though they don't tell you that it's not to scale. So what I'm gonna do now is ask you, if you haven't already, um, or even if you did this question already, Grab a ruler out. Please use a ruler. It's going to be immensely helpful to you and have a go at drawing this diagram. It's 8.05 on my clock, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes um, to have a go at this. Um, you guys have an added advantage, which you've got grid paper. I know I could turn on grid paper, but I'm deliberately not using it because in the HSC, you will not get grid paper. Um, so you have to be able to, again, definitely use your um, ruler to try and get some sense of scale here and help yourself out. Uh, I'm going to give you yeah, that, that time to draw a diagram for yourself and then I'm going to reveal to you what my diagram looks like and how I reason my way through it. So let me pause. Uh, if you've got questions, you're welcome to pop them into the chat because Mrs. Lees and I can see that. And um, otherwise, I will hold for a minute um, while you draw your own diagram and please take the time to draw a good one. You'll desperately need it. Okay, so I hope that's given you enough time to have a think. Um, we're going to build this diagram, and as I mentioned before, you can do these vectors in any order, but, um, I mean, why not do them in the order that's presented? One, two, three, and then four. So here's where I'm going to begin. You can see I've drawn in F1, just starts from the origin, and then up it goes. And F2 is heading off again in a northeast ish direction. It would be northeast if this angle here was 45 degrees, but it's not, it's 60. So um, what I've done is um, I've drawn this in here. Now I'm just going to pause before I go any further. You can see um, I, um, I don't have a ruler here on me, but I, I, I used one actually when I was drawing this. However, even though we don't get a grid when, we, um, uh, when we're in the final HSC, um, I am going to show you there's a sort of um, neat trick that you can use, it's not really a trick, it's just thinking about trigonometry and its relationships really, um, that will help you draw this diagram to scale. Um, when you have a look at this, right, um, I've got this angle 60 degrees off of here. And so what I can think about is the fact that um, there's triangles everywhere kind of hidden in this diagram. I'm trying not to do um, too many uh, extra lines because they're going to cloud our diagram quite badly. Um, but I want you to see um, this particular line up here, let me just move this out of the way, that I haven't constructed yet and I'm gonna put it in, uh, in green over here. All right, now. Have a look carefully at this uh, new triangle that we formed here. Because I have drawn the lines, um, the dotted lines that form the sides of this triangle at right angles, right? I've got this right angle triangle in here, and then I also have this um, 60 degrees, right? Now this therefore, for the, with the 60 and the 90, means that this is the 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is not a random triangle. You're gonna see 60 degrees coming up an awful lot um, for the same reason that you saw, you know, root threes appearing when we were doing complex numbers because it just makes the manipulation of um, arithmetic and the geometry much easier to handle. We're not trying to make this awkward for you and provide you terrible angles that make things just um, a pain to try and manipulate. We want you to focus on the geometry and the, the reasoning through this, not the fact that the, the numbers are awkward, right? So the fact that I've created the 30, 60, 90 triangle here, and the fact that the two is on the hypotenuse, maybe you can see that if this is 30 and sine 30 is a half, right? Then opposite on hypotenuse gives you one on two. This is the one, two, root three triangle. So as a result, I know that this is one. 
And that tells me, you can see how I've actually used the scale, even provided by my horizontal lines here. If this is one, I've used two lines to indicate that rather than one so that my diagram isn't microscopic. Um, if this is one, then this also has to be one. So you can see it vertically going up by that same amount. Um, and that should mean this is roughly root three. So if you were using, well not roughly root three, it should be exactly root three. But if you were using like your, um, uh, your ruler to measure this out, right? You would think, oh, that should be 1.7-ish centimeters, um, or 3.4 if you were going double, or whatever scale that you like. Um, so that's me trying to do this diagram in a sensible way. So I've got the 30, 60, 90 there, and that's F2. That's really good. Going back up, you can see I've got F3 here. It's going 120 degrees off uh, clockwise from the vertical, um, but also notice that its magnitude is four, right? So when I construct this, right, I want you to think about this carefully. If its angle is 120 degrees uh, clockwise from the vertical, and its magnitude is four, which is double this, can you see there's gonna be some relationships here, right? Um, for example, you can see if I just go halfway like so, um, because you've got this 120 degrees here, do you notice that going backwards to F2, right? That's also 120 degrees going this way because you've got co-interior angles formed between this, um, this vertical here on the left and this vertical here on the right. So 120 degrees versus 60 degrees because they're supplementary. So this 120 degrees on the left-hand side of the diagram, let me just highlight that in orange so you can see it sort of in comparison, um, it's going to be symmetrical to this 120 degrees on the right hand side. So I'm going off in the same direction, there I go two units, and in order to get to the end of F3, I just have to go twice as far. So you can see there's F3 over there, and I've got this kind of halfway point here, right? Where this is two, and this is also two, and that gives me four. Now, this is super important because you can see, remember how I mentioned this is one unit here? Well, this is one unit as well. In fact, I'm even gonna show that one unit, like so. There's one unit, so now I'm in line. And then I get one unit again, because I've got the same, I've got um, congruent triangles happening here, right? So I've got this, uh, relationship over here. I don't know why I drew that so wonky. There's that same horizontal length that we saw up here, which is root three. And then we see it one more time over, oopsie daisy, um, over here. Okay, so I wonder if you're piecing together how we're going to be able to finish this, right? Um, I've got this root 3 up here because of this 30, 60, 90 triangle, and that same root 3 appears again and again as after I've done F1 and then F2 and then F3. And now I have my final question, or my final vector rather to answer the question, which is after F1 and F2 and F3, what happens when I apply F4? Now, because I know the magnitude of this vector, F4, right, the, the final part of this question, I know that I'm not um, going to be moving uh, north. Um, I'm not gonna be moving um, uh, in the direction 30 degrees south of west, south of west, that's kind of off in that direction because you can see um, I'm in line right now. I'm kind of on this horizontal line here, the east-west line, or the east-west axis, if you like, from the origin. So I'm not gonna have any up or down because um, F4 is not gonna add any up or down. The only question is, Am I going to be, uh, let's use this color here, am I going to match up exactly? Am I gonna to return to the origin because I do go to um, the west direction by a similar looking amount? Or am I gonna be west or am I gonna be east? I'll be west if I go past the origin and I'll be east if I don't quite make it to the origin. Hopefully now by me sort of talking this through, you've seen where you're going to end up, right? Am I going to hit the origin, go past it, or just be short? And the answer is, knowing that this is root three, this is root three, and this is root three, I've said it already a few times here, root three is about 1.7, right? So if you go and punch into your calculator three times root three, um, I mean, three times 1.7 is 5.1, but there's some extra trailing decimal places, so I think what you'll find is, it's gonna be approximately 5.2. This distance here from the origin, all the way to the end of F3 is about 5.2, which means that if I go um, from the end of F3 and I track towards, oops, let's get a straight line there. If I track towards, back towards the origin, am I going to get there after I apply F4? And the answer is, I'm not going to make it because F4 is only five units long. It's not going to be the 5.2 I need to get all the way back um, to where I started, right? Can you see 
how ultra important it is to have a really good, not just a good diagram, a really good diagram, um, so that you don't accidentally kind of stuff yourself up by your scale being not off, I mean it's going to be off a little bit, but you don't want to be so disastrously off that you can no longer reason successfully with this diagram. So, I haven't even answered the question yet, I've just completed my diagram. The question was, um, what will the motion of the body be? Is it going to be in equilibrium? And the answer is no, because I don't reach back to the origin. Am I going to be west? Well, I would be west if I passed the origin, but I didn't. I, I was just short. So what that means is, I'm going to be moving to the east. And now because we've got a good diagram and we've reasoned through it, um, I can say, I can zoom in here and I can even say, it's going to be east and by how much, and the answer is the magnitude will be, um, oopsie daisy, um, 3 root 3, which was that 5.2-ish number, take away 5, which I guess would be roughly 0 0.2. Um, I don't think we even have units for this, like what the magnitude units are. They just say 1, 2, 4, and 5. So I'm just going to leave that as... Um, units. Well, they don't even ask this question. So I hope you can see how I've reasoned through this and how crucial the diagram was.